Well, good day to you all, and welcome to our contemporary video service. Today we find ourselves in the seventh Sunday, and actually the last Sunday in the season of Easter. Next Sunday, you're going to notice a little different look in our video worship space because next Sunday we will be celebrating Pentecost. So you will see more red, you will see more orange. It's hard to believe that we are at the season of Pentecost next Sunday already. But for today, we are still in the season of Easter. In regards to announcements, I don't have a whole lot other than to say that basically our Coffee with the Pastor Zoom on Tuesday mornings is still going. You can check uh, the bulletin online. You could uh, check out all the information in regards to that there as to when it starts and how to get in there. And uh, basically, in regards to the shutdown, uh, our latest shutdown, just keep checking the website, keep checking our social media platforms, and there you will find information regarding uh, when we might be opening up again. That's the best we can say at this point. But until then, at least we can connect this way and worship our Lord and the gospel will continue to be proclaimed. Our service begins with the gathering, and I invite you to respond when it comes to your part. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Holy God, you are filled with love and mercy for each of us. Because you promised to forgive the sin of those who confess them, we can bring our prayers before you now. God of love and mercy, forgive the sin of our thoughts, words, and deeds. Forgive the sin of what we have done and left undone. Forgive the sin of all that we are unwilling or unable to understand. Forgive us. Grow faith in us. Grow love in us. You are able to grow faith in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. You are able to forgive us because of what Jesus Christ accomplished on our behalf. You call us into ministry with one another to draw people closer to you and for us to be one as you and the Father are one. For this and much more besides, we thank you and praise your holy name. Let us continue our worship by listening to a beautiful song called Christ is Risen.
Our worship continues with our prayer of the day. And let us pray together. Gracious God, you have chosen us as your own. And by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now... For our children's lesson, let's listen to the one that Lisa Wilson has prepared for us.
everyone, it's me, Lisa Wilson, your Sunday School Superintendent. It has been so long since we've been able to sing together that I thought we would start with a song. So if we were all together in Sunday School, this is the point where we're all in church and I would say, good morning, and you would all yell it back, let's hear it. Awesome. And then I would ask, what day is it today? And knowing a few of my grade five and sixers, I would get a yell back of Sunday and I would say absolutely it's Sunday you are correct but today is a special Sunday does anyone know what it is you listen does anyone know what it is can you shout it out to me hmm. you try it I think I heard it it's Ascension Sunday so today is Ascension Sunday and what Ascension is where have you heard that word before Ascension if you've been going to church or bought worshiping online or when prior to all of this, when we would go to service together, maybe you saw it on the wall behind me when we were in um, the education wing is the Apostles Creed. And we would hear that word ascension. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father and he will come again. That's part of the Apostles Creed. And as you listen through service with Pastor Terry later, you're going to hear that when we say the Apostles Creed together. And today's reading is actually from just before Jesus ascended. So Jesus died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again on Easter Sunday. And then we hear a few stories about him appearing to the women and to Thomas and to the disciples. And um, our story today that Pastor Terry is going to read comes from just before he ascended. And I'm going to read just a little bit of it for you because that's what we're going to talk about today. And this is Jesus as he's praying and he says to God, he says, All I have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None have been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture would be fulfilled. So that's John 17 and I started reading at verse 10. So who is the them in that verse? The them, the them is the disciples. The disciples that Jesus had been with, the disciples that Jesus had taught, the disciples that Jesus loved. And those disciples, Jesus wanted them protected when he was gone. He's prayed to God and he said, when I was here on earth, I protected them and I lost none of them. But now I'm coming to you, so I need you to protect them. And as I was thinking about this, I thought, man, Jesus was ascending to God, back to heaven, to the amazing place that heaven is. And yet his heart was heavy because he loved his disciples and he wanted them protected and he wanted them safe. And I've been thinking about the last 15 months and I know for myself, and I think I can probably speak for Pastor Terry and Reverend Melissa, for your Sunday school teachers, we've all felt how Jesus felt, how we feel separated from you guys. And maybe you feel separated from us. And that separation, it hurts and it's hard. But we need to do what Jesus did. And I do, I pray for all of you. And Jesus prayed to God too. And he said, protect them. I have lost none of them except the one chosen to be lost. I want them all protected and I don't want to lose them. And today, that them is you and me. Jesus wants to protect you and me. And he still prays to God the Father and says, God, protect them. Keep them safe. I do not want them lost. So just like in our song, we heard thy word, God's word, is a lamp unto our feet. The reading of the Bible, um, coming to worship together, singing with your family, singing with me. These are all ways that we can remember to be on the path with Jesus. And God gives us these opportunities so that we can stay on the path. And 
I just want all of you to know that we're praying for you and loving you. And just as Jesus was ascending into heaven and was worried about his disciples, he worries about us. And yet we all know if Jesus could pray to God to protect his disciples and to protect us, we can pray to God. And God will keep us safe. He's there to light the path for us. And just remember that we all love you. So let's fold our hands and we're going to pray. God, as we search for the path that will lead us safely through this world, we place our trust in you and ask for your guidance and protection. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me and I hope you sang with me and maybe you can sing that song again um, throughout the week with your moms and dads. Bye. Our first reading for today comes to us from the book of Acts, the first chapter. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice and Matthias. When they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Our second reading today is from the book of 1 John, the fifth chapter. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. So let us now listen to a song that describes how that eternal life for us came to be. How deep the Father's love for us.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For those of you who were standing, please be seated. The words that you just heard from our gospel lesson would all be in the color of red if you have one of those particular kind of Bibles. Because every word you just heard was spoken by Jesus. The entire gospel reading is Jesus speaking to his disciples. In fact, it is Thursday night, the night before his crucifixion. And he knows he will soon be leaving his disciples to fulfill his mission, and he wants them to be prepared. And so Jesus has been teaching his disciples all the way through chapters 14, 15, and 16 about his nature, his mission, his destiny, and all about their role and future in all of this. Now, here in chapter 17, he prays for them. This entire gospel reading is a prayer. And speaking of prayer, what do you pray for? Maybe the question should be, do you pray? But let's assume that sometime, somewhere, somehow, everybody prays. It has been said before, there are no atheists in foxholes. In other words, everyone prays when the only thing left to do is to pray. So, whenever you do pray, what do you pray for? Another way to put it is, what do you want? What do you want out of life? What do you need? What do you want out of God? What do you want badly enough that you'll take the time to talk to God and ask? And even if it is possible to not pray ever, or if we can't pray, well, then the scriptures say Jesus prays for us. Not just about us, but on behalf of us when we can't pray. And of course, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray for ourselves or for others, but that we have more going for us than we might think when it comes to prayer. 
even when we might be thinking in our prayers of giving up. Prayer isn't just nice. We need to pray. We need to pray. And we need to never, never, never give up praying. I wanted to emphasize the point of never giving up. And I found two cute stories about just that. One about frogs and another about astronauts I found. And since our congregation knows a thing or two about dairy farming, I thought I would share the one with you about frogs. Even though I think somewhere I might have mentioned this story before. It goes like this. It seems that two frogs jumped into a bucket of cream on a dairy farm. May as well give up, croaked one frog after trying in vain to get out. We're goners. Keep on paddling, said the other frog. We'll get out of this mess somehow. It's no use, said the first. It's too thick to swim in. It's too thin to jump out of. It's too slippery to crawl through. We're bound to die sometime anyway, so it may as well be tonight. So he sank to the bottom of the bucket, and he died. His friend just kept on paddling and paddling and paddling and praying and praying and praying. By morning, he was perched on a mass of butter that he had churned all by himself. There he was, with a grin on his face, eating the flies that came swarming from every direction. And what was looking like the end for that frog was only a beginning. Prayer is about not giving up on yourself or on God. The prayer Jesus prayed was prayed at a time when giving up would have been easy. You see, Jesus prayed his prayer between dinner and death. Between having dinner with his disciples, one of whom would deny him, all of whom would desert him, and dealing with the realities that would lead to his death, Jesus prayed. But he did not pray for a way out. He prayed for a way forward. What Jesus prayed for when his praying time was running short was not what you would expect. So let's look at his prayer. The very first thing he prayed for the night before he died was that in what was happening to him, God would be glorified. That's the first thing he prayed for. And we pray like that when we pray like him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name means glorified be your name. He told us to pray that first. It's kind of like we're saying, in all the rest of the stuff that I've got to talk with you about God, may there be some glory in this for you. And then, what does Jesus pray for next? Well, it's not really a what, it's a who did he pray for next. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for those he loved. He prayed, Father, I don't ask you to take my followers out of the world, but to protect them from the evil one. I have heard it said before, do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. Now just think about that for a second. Even if it means that you have to pause this video, do so. That's what Jesus prayed for his disciples. Power to handle the problems ahead. But in this prayer of Jesus, the one in which he started 
praying for glory to be given to his Father. The one which he, in which he prayed for his disciples and those he loved. He also prayed for something else. Something important for us to hear. He prayed it for the disciples. He prayed it for you and me. And he was rather insistent about it. He prayed that they may be one as we are one. We refers to Jesus and God. They were Jesus' closest friends. Jesus prayed for his friends a closeness. He prayed for togetherness. He prayed for a oneness like that of God and himself. For all of those whom he loves. Which includes you and I. I ask that they may all be one. That they may be one as we are one. That they may become completely one. Three times, in three sentences, Jesus prayed that you and I might be of one mind and one spirit. The mind and spirit of God. Most on Jesus' mind and in his prayers the night before he died was you and I. And whether you and I would have a oneness. So we could go it together through that list of things that we've all got to get through. Whether people like you and I would ever come to understand that we're in it together. Whether we like it or not. For us to realize that that's the way that life is. And that the way to live life is not every man for himself, but all for one and one for all. See, that's two cliches in one sentence. I know that. I'm sorry, but it's true. And that's what Jesus prayed for. That which divides us is that which destroys us. Jesus knew it because that's what ended up destroying him. A division. Theological and political differences killed him. So in the urgency of that time between dinner and death, Jesus prayed that we would not be divided. He prayed that we would be one. One with each other, and one with him. The sense of oneness Jesus prayed for us with each other is the same oneness he prays for us to have with God. There's a vertical relationship between God and you and I. And there's a horizontal relationship between you and I and others. Just think what a world this would be if our relationships with God were anything like Jesus' relationship with God. And then that was mirrored in our relationships with everyone around us. So he prays for us the same things that he asks for his disciples. That we may find God's support and encouragement and that we may be one in fellowship with each other and with God. In all of our differences, he prays that all of us may be drawn together into one. After all, even though we, have, we may have differences of opinions on many different matters, and even though we can get passionate about those opinions, right? We are all children of God, and we all experience the same emotions and feelings. And during this pandemic, we have even more to disagree on than usual. Masks, vaccines, restrictions. And you add that to the list of things that we already had to disagree on. Well, where is your focus? Do you focus on the oneness that Christ prayed for us to have? Or do we let the focus be 
the disagreements and the division. It's okay to disagree with each other. But can you see Christ in the person that you are disagreeing with? And can that person see Christ in you? Each and every time we join our different voices, our different personalities, and our different passions together to recite the Lord's Prayer, we speak the same words. We speak the same prayer. And in that prayer, we are one. Our baptisms make all of us as varied people with all of our varied interests and quirks one. But Jesus prayed for what seems impossible. That the kind of love we see in the relationship Jesus had with God would be the kind of love in all the relationships of our lives. Was he asking too much of us? It might seem so to us, but he didn't think so. That's why he prayed for it. And here's where we are never, ever to give up. Here's where we are never to cease praying. As I read Jesus' prayer, I thought about a prayer that I've prayed many times. And this prayer is commonly used at weddings. It's part of the prayer for the new couple. Words which put emphasis on putting together or making one. It goes like this. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit that they may grow in love and peace with you and each other all the days of their lives. Does it always happen? No. But that's what Jesus prayed the night before he died for you and I. That what he knew we couldn't do, God would do. He prayed that God would make us one with each other and with him. And that means that you and I can pray for no less. The Lord's Prayer is so beloved by so many people because it's the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. But please... Don't disregard this special prayer in John. Because in it, Jesus is praying for us. Jesus prays to God for us to be one with them. And when we can't pray, maybe because we are lying in bed too sick to even wake up, Jesus prays for us. And for those who pass away and are at rest in God's peaceful embrace, Jesus still prays that we would be one with them. He prays to us today about eternity, about an eternal oneness and an eternal love. My brothers and sisters, I hope that this leaves you today with thankful hearts. Be thankful Be thankful that we have a Savior who prays for us and draws us all together. Be thankful for our Savior who prayed for us on the night before he died and taught us to never give up and to never lose hope. Be thankful for our Savior whose death and resurrection is not an ending to the gospel story, but only a beginning. So, each of you can go on with your days with a smile on your heart, knowing that you are not alone. Knowing that we are all one in Him. We do have support. Because not only can we encourage each other, but we can also know, deep in our minds and our hearts and our souls, that the Son of God himself is praying 
for each one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. So now let's listen to the song, Whom Shall I Fear? Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Normally, as you know, this is the part of the contemporary service where we ask for prayer requests. And since we can't do that right now in the normal way, I invite you to spend some time in prayer, either by yourself or with others, now or later, whatever you feel more comfortable doing. And just think about the fact that Jesus prays for us. And what Jesus prayed for And if Jesus prayed for it, then it most certainly must be important. 
And Jesus prayed that we would all be one. Through all of our differences and our disagreements and divisions, that we would all be one. Therefore, I invite you to notice places where we are not one. And then pray for those situations. Pray that the peace of Christ may help us to be one in him. And right now, as I said, during this pandemic, we have been given more opportunities to disagree with each other. I hear them almost every day, and I'm sure you do as well. The masks, the vaccines, the government restrictions, and on and on it goes. Don't let those differences of opinion be the focus of your day. Let the oneness that we have in Christ be your focus. Differences of opinion can easily divide. Our oneness in Christ brings together. So let's add our prayers of oneness and togetherness to the prayers of our Savior today. And that leads us into the sharing of the peace. Please take a moment today and think about someone who may need to hear from you. It might be someone you always connect with. It might be someone you rarely or have ever, never connected with. In some way, reach out to them. Share the peace of Christ with them. It just might be exactly what they need the most this day. And we have a lot to be thankful for. Even in the midst of a pandemic that's dragging on, and even in the midst of stressful lives, whatever that stress may be. And it really does help to think about those things that we are thankful for, even in the midst of those challenges. One thing we heard today is that Jesus prays for us. Certainly something to be thankful for. But there are many, many other things as well. And with the things and the people that we are thankful for in our minds and in our hearts, let us pray together today's prayer of blessing. Holy God, we try our best not to squander our lives on meaningless consumption. Open our hearts and our hands to give so that your work in this world may be done. As we live in this world, may our lives be directed by your teaching. Amen. And now let us pray, as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And you can see in that prayer that Jesus taught us how it connects with the prayer that we heard today that Jesus prays for us. If we follow what Jesus taught us to pray and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, that is a big part of us being one with each other. So now, let's listen to our closing song for today, Mighty to Save.
Receive the blessings of our Lord. Children of God, depart now in the hope and blessed comfort of our Savior who prays for each one of us. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Go in peace, my friends.